It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, and we've got some history in this battle of AFL alumni. It's the New England Patriots and the Miami Dolphins on Thursday night. The summer humidity has given way to an absolutely gorgeous fall afternoon here at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Tonight on this fine Thursday night, we've got a good one in store as it'll be the New England Patriots taking on the Miami Dolphins. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. At CD, the Dolphins, they've got some high hopes for 2023. They feel like they've got the pieces to make a run. They need a little bit of health, but they think they can be right there in the AFC East. And they'll want every game to be a track meet because speed is their calling card. If they're able to sprint out there ahead of people and make them chase, they'll be tough to reel in. Meanwhile, for the Patriots, they come in off an 8-9 record a year ago, a second losing season in the last three. It had to happen sometime. But you say don't pour water on these pads just yet. <laughs> no, not at all. No one should ever do that. Remember, they're always going to be tough for you to crack defensively. Offensively is where they have to make a jump. They've got to start scaring people with some big play weapons on the perimeter. The kicker, Chad Ryland, has this one teed up. And we are underway from Miami. This taken in at the goal line. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The Dolphins set to go on offense for the first time behind their 25-year-old quarterback, now in his fourth NFL season, Tua Tungavailoa. Injuries overshadowed a great season from Tua last season. He led a Miami passing game that was one of the best in the league. And even more importantly, took them to the postseason for the first time in six years. That jump they were looking for from him, it absolutely occurred. They faked the handoff. Now Tua. And incomplete on the deep ball. And that might have been a situation where even though you don't hit on the deep throw, you at least put in the defender's minds early in the game that we're going to press the ball deep against your secondary. And that can have a ripple effect on how they function throughout. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Motion man is Berrios. Now their 31-year-old running back, Raheem Mostert. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. Now Tua. He's got it. Execution was one of their watchwords leading up to this one. And on that play, able to execute brilliantly here on this opening drive. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Had an open man that time and ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Second and ten. A run with Mostert up the middle. And he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. That was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Tug of Iloa going to try and throw on third down. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as this defense unable to hold. 
it's a seven yard gain there on third and two solid opening drive so far Charles they've moved this football into field goal range but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three absolutely is one of the better coaches in the league always tells me on offense I want their body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts we'll hear the body blows right now he's hoping one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive that will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved. Just as you said, they want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Most are there with a quality gain and paired with head coach Mike McDaniel of Miami had his best season as a pro last year nearly 900 yards in 16 games injuries derailed a couple of seasons for him prior but he has shown that when healthy he can chase the 1,000 yard mark. Now some movement before the snap and we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. Now the offense knew it they were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. Touchdown, Dolphins! Tyreek Hill on the touchdown pass from Tua. And the Dolphins put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. They got to love that. Nine-play drive results in six points. That means they're doing the dictating. That means that they've described how the game's going to go. They're playing at their tempo, at their pace. If you're on the other side of the ball, if you're playing defense, defense is not methodical. They've got to go in there and shake things up and create a little havoc. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And it's now a 7-0 game. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And he returns this to the 22. And the Patriots offense set to go to work with Mac Jones at quarterback in his third season now out of Alabama. It was a much rockier season for Jones in his second year and he even had to survive a brief challenge to his starting job. This is a big campaign for the former Rookie of the Year runner-up. He wants to get back to Pro Bowl form in this one. Jones and the Pats now with a first and 10 at their own 22. A thousand yard rusher a year ago. Here's Ramon Ray Stevenson. Up past the 25 to the 26, a gain of five. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. So from the 26-yard line, here's second and five. Here's the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott. And he'll get a couple up to the 29. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursue, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. Here's third and three. Throwing Jones. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Patriots first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. And already down seven to nothing after the touchdown a minute ago. So a three and out here would not be ideal for them. Nice job finding his receiver there. And they get the first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now Jones. Right back to Henry, and Henry's got it again. 
And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Another first down as they call his number again. He's got 15 yards here. Good work here by the tight end. It's a crossing route off of play action. They're going to let the slot receiver run a post to hopefully let the defense think they're taking a shot. And then they bring the tight end underneath, and it winds up a first down. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 49-yard line. And some solid footwork there as he'll take this down to about the 38. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they blocked well too. Not only have they scouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. This one to Bourne, and he's got it. And they move this all the way down to the nine. He got 29 yards that time. Just picking up yardage in bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. First and goal and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. Here's Stevenson. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. All right, so they got that one, Charles, against the center. And let's remember how difficult it is for the center because, remember, he's got to snap the ball to put the play in motion. And sometimes you got that big guy on your nose. you got sometimes where he's coming at you at an angle. It's a difficult job for him to snap the ball and then execute his block. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. A gain of nine there. Sets up second and goal. But yet another completion here on this opening drive, and he's now perfect four of four to start. Pretty solid execution here. And how about how everyone's handled their nerves? Because you know what it's like to start a ball game. You're so amped up and ready to go. And sometimes the execution... It... And he's in! Touchdown, Patriots! Ramondre Stevenson. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Patriots respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. Well, he finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three downs, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. Extra point by Ryland, up and good. And we are tied at seven. So that drive goes eight plays. And it was polished off by a Ramondre Stevenson touchdown run. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 here as the kick's away. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. So Miami coming out for their second drive. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And, partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. From the 24 now, here's second and three. Tua sets up to pass it. This will be caught. It's Waddle. And they work this well upfield across the 45. And now a pause. It looks like we have a Patriot injured on the play. We'll get an update when we come back to Miami.
Two and now on first down. And this one is incomplete. Well, they certainly came out firing in this one, and while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that'll be the last shot that they take in this game. Here's second and ten. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And he's fortunate to get anything from that. Give him a yard up to the 49. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. That is caught. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. Well, that's one way to convert on third down, picking up 26 yards. For the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. Now whistles and a flag, and I believe a Dolphin got going a little early. And that's on Austin Jackson, first-round pick in 2020. A full start backs him up five, first and 15. Here's a toss play right to Mostert. It gets by him, and now a little daylight. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Once again, it's Mostert. And he'll take this one inside the 10 down to the 8. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. It went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? On second down, Tua. Touchdown to a tongue of Iloa. An eight-yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins have taken the lead. And there's something that goes back to the early years of his career. Remember, he had three touchdowns in each of his first couple of seasons. None last year as they tried to dial back his running, especially down close to the goal line. Sanders now to add the extra point. It's up and good, and it's 14-7 now here in the first quarter. So that drive in total eight plays. And it was to a tongue of Iloa who called his own number and finished it off with a touchdown run. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. So back onto the field come the Pats for their second drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And not much there. 
maybe a yard up to the 24. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Through one corner, 14-7, our score. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Patriots in control of the football. They work now on second and nine, as they've got it as we resume action. Stevenson gets it again on second down. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? They'll see about converting this third and eight. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Well, as my dad would say sometimes, I'm just scratching my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you lose him in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, make sure it's someone on the short side of things, not deep downfield, that can hurt your defense. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Out of the gun, they give it to Stevenson. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. And they'll run the toss here with Stevenson. And he is going to lose yardage here. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Third and 15 here after the first and second down plays went in the wrong direction. Back to throw. Jones setting up a screen for Stevenson. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. The Dolphins ready to take over on offense. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Two in the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at the 20. Motion man is Berrios. They'll start on the ground with Moster. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 13 yards on his first catch. It's a first down as well. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Now they'll send Waddle in motion left. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. And that is well read there defensively. He was looking to use his speed to get the edge, but they said no way. Now a stoppage here as it looks like we've got a Dolphin shaken up on the play. We'll get an update when we come back to Hard Rock Stadium.
Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Two are going to throw. Throw right side, going to be caught here by Waddle. This offense so far on third down, a perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third and four. Another catch there for Waddle. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Here's second and three. Play action. Now it's Tua. And that one going to come up short. Low throw. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. They'll try and run here with Mostert. Just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. Makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. So on fourth down, here's Jake Bailey to punt for the Dolphins. right there out of bounds at the two yard line New England trying to get a place on offense the crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back to back punts they want some big plays they want to see some offense they want to see somebody break away whether it's through the air or on the ground now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides each head coach can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy to throw from his end zone. Jones throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Kendrick Bourne, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Up the middle, here's Elliott. And he's upended at the six as they double their room to maneuver on a pickup of three. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Now third down and seven. Operating from the gun, Jones. Buried behind the line by Christian Wilkins. Now, this is where field awareness comes into play. He's getting perilously close to his own goal line, and after that sack, backed up to his own two. The Patriots send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return, and it'll be Dolphin football. Speedster Raheem Mostert and the rest of this offense out to start the drive. A good job in the passing game. Decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally you run to set up the pass. Here it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. He's going to take a shot right away for the end zone. Oh, and that is incomplete. 
I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. Now a second and ten. Looking to pass to him. Got a man. It's Barrios complete. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. Heavy set out there on third and one. Here's Tua. A little short pass here to Hill. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to convert on third and short yardage with a gain of four. They brought in the heavy set on third down, and that usually means running play. But we have seen them throw out of that formation. And sure enough, they snuck the tight end out on that one, wound up hitting him for a first down. We've hit the two-minute mark in the second quarter, 14-7. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Two and a throw again. Open net is Waddle complete. So the completion good for just three. And that will bring up second down. Throwing now is Tungavailoa. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Tyreek Hill that time. Third down here. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Out of the gun on third down. Here's Tua. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. Two and now on first down. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. That's good, the completion there for seven yards. And it'll be second down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Second down and three. Again, they will throw it with Tungabailoa. And they'll get this on the screen to Mostert. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. And give him three on the screen. He couldn't break free, and it's third down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. So third and inches, and this will be the ninth play of the drive. They run out of the shotgun with Mostert. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as it will come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Now Tua. Catch made right side by Wilson. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. Let's 
Let's go, boy. Let's, Let's go. go. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field from the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Sanders' kick is good, and the Dolphins will add on to their lead. So no problems at all on that one. And, and you know, virtually no win. This is a kicker's dream here tonight. It absolutely is, isn't it? So to me, with no win, it should be a passer's dream as well, yeah. right? But in this case, the defense held out. They had to force the field goal. So, barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. So, we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we go up to Orlando now and hand it over to Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, to our brand-new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. The Dolphins got some strong play out of their quarterback number one, Tua Tungavailoa. He had a touchdown both in the air and on the ground to help push his guys into the lead at the break. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work, as always, as we welcome you back for quarter number three. A 10-point game, 17-7 to score as we get back to it on EA Sports. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Here comes the Patriots offensive unit. They'll have it first here to begin the third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. The first play of the second half, a big success, over 30 yards. Uh, that's the kind of play this offense desperately needed. They've got to be saying, our defense has kept us in the ball game. We're down, but we're certainly not out. And maybe that was the spark that they've been searching for. So the line of scrimmage all the way up to midfield now as they've got it first and 10. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Short pass caught by Henry. So the completion good for six yards, and that'll make it second down. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. From the 44 now, here's second and four. Now Jones. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. Jalen Phillips, the former first-rounder, getting in there for the sack. I'd say it's not panic time yet, but let's be honest about it. Empty possession here, not what you're looking for when you're down a couple of scores. Absolutely not. Trying to start the second half off on the right foot. Unfortunately, going to give the ball up. Throwing Jones. And that is incomplete. To give you an idea of how accurate he's been throwing the football, we're in the second half. That's just his second incompletion. Well, if he's not locked in, that means everyone's locked in because to me it's like throwing a no-hitter in baseball. The pitcher may get the credit, a lot of people making plays behind him in the field. They'll I mean, get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. Yeah, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready 
for their first possession of the second half. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 24. He'll look to Mostert to start things out. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 59 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. Defensively, they were in the 3-4. Solid run up the middle. What made it successful? Well, what you have to do is control the nose guard, but sometimes you don't do it by blocking him. You do it by influencing him. Get him moving to one side or the other and hit him back on the opposite. On first down, they go with Mostert again. And there's the stiff arm. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. From the 43, here's a second and four. Again, they'll run it with Moster. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. Motion man is Berrios. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. And good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 35-yard line. 18 big yards on that one, and a Miami first. I think the reason that this play is so successful is not just the blocking at the point of attack, but how about the speed at which he takes the handoff? He's in motion already, so he's not coming from a flat start like a running back often is. He's at a full run by the time he gets the football. On first and 10, it's Mostert. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. On the handoff, this is Mostert. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. And just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? Lob has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. Right back to him on first down. And he's going to get this one down inside the 15. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Oh, lots of praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. Tongue of Iloa to throw on second down here. This one left side caught by Barrios. And the Dolphins are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful when you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. All of a sudden, those lanes that were there earlier in the drive dry up near the goal line. That's a good job defensively to diagnose the run and stop it for a very short pickup. Again, it's Mostert. But he will go backwards as he stopped for a loss. 
It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Going to the air. Tug of Iloa. And that is caught. Touchdown, Miami. Durham Smythe. A five-yard touchdown. And the Dolphins are able to extend their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, that's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. New England's offense set to go. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. They'll send a receiver in motion to the left. Now a fake on the jet sweep, and they'll instead run up the middle. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A nice stick and stop for a loss here from Jalen Phillips. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Operating from the gun. Jones. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it. Trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. The Patriots send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. So possession goes over here on the punt. And they will take over first and ten. Miami set to take over. And it's a unit last drive that did it all on the ground, Charles. And they controlled it from the interior, big on big, right? Offensive lineman versus defensive lineman. But you know, in order to keep the football moving downfield, other people have to get involved as well. Your wide receivers, your tight ends, lead runners, anything that you have possible to get in front and keep the ball moving. And now the defense may be looking out for a pass coming up. To his throw is taken in by Waddle. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. I tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. On play action, here's Tua. Open man downfield is Hill. And he'll be stopped right there at the 28. 25 yards that time. 
And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. And a nice move will yield nothing as he stopped behind the line. That's Keon White who worked his way in and made the play. That was a good illustration of setting the edge as a defensive end, being able to make sure that you stay on your feet no matter what type of block, and you're not going to get pushed inside, stayed home, skated to the outside, and made the play. They faked the handoff. Now Tua. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Tongue of Iloa working out of the gun. He's going to go up top again. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. They were maybe hoping for a little bit of a back shoulder fade there. And that's a play that's been in vogue the last few years in all aspects of football. But they couldn't get the hook up there. Sanders' kick is good, and the Dolphins will add on to their lead. The three more points tacked on at this margin, getting more comfortable by the minute. And with the lead where it is, you can actually feel good about field goals. We talk all the time about scoring sixes, not threes. But in this case, they're just looking to chew up some time and come away with points. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. And now out come the Patriots. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Patriot first down. And you start to think, if it's going to happen for these guys, it's got to start with this drive. Down three scores, they need to start making some inroads. And that'll help the cause there as they pick up good yardage and a first down. Jones throwing on first down. Out route, and this is Henry with a catch. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Miami. It's Patriot football, but they trail here as we begin the fourth quarter. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. On the draw is Stevenson. Well, he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Yeah, so they get that one, Charles, on the right tackle. Yeah, oftentimes in that spot, you're trying to work against a defender, trying to set the edge in the running game, and you're trying to drive around and get your body twisted so that he can't get there. Sometimes your hands get too involved. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. 
As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step downfield of man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. And this offense on third down today, they've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and 11. Quick completion to Henry. And he'll get this up near midfield, but that's still a few yards shy of the first down. So the completion good for seven there. And that'll bring up fourth down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. The Patriots come up empty on fourth down. And the Dolphins get the football in great field position. Well, they've clearly made a conscious decision here to be more aggressive in the late stages of this game here in the second half. And I get it. In this situation, you know, if you want to be aggressive out near midfield, you feel good about your defense maybe, or just, hey, I thought I had a proper play call. But how about the guys that just stopped them? How good do they feel right now? All right, you want to go for it here? We shut you down. They're over on the bench right now feeling great. A run with Mostert up the middle. And he picks up about six as he gets this down to the 41. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Second down, here's Mostert again. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Tua sets up to pass it. And this is going to be incomplete. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And this one's out of bounds. Should be inside the 10, I think it is, at the six-yard line. So the Patriots coming out now. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. Throwing again on second and ten. Jones. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. And they're at the point of the ball game now where they've got to take some chances. They've got to put the ball in the air and just see what happens. But this defense knows that all too well. So back-to-back -back incompletions and that has them staring at a third and ten. Looking to throw, Jones. And he is caught. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there. And for the offense, they're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Back to throw again. 
Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. So the incomplete pass there, but the roughing the passer call bails them out. Which means you have to stay on the field on defense longer because you've given the offense free snaps, not to mention the free yardage after that mistake. They'll look to throw again. He'll find Parker again, complete. So five yards here, five on the play. And it's second down. You got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. From the 48-yard line, here's second down and five. Again, he'll drop to throw. Henry's got it out on the left side. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 34-yard line. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Back to throw. Jones. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. Looking to throw. Jones. And a throw there going to be incomplete. It just seems like all game long there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. And flip down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. The Patriots come up empty on fourth down. And the Dolphins' defense is able to hold. So they've gone for it twice now on fourth down of this game, and both times unsuccessful. I wish we could hear the headsets now between the head coach and the offensive coordinator. Now that they're 0 for 2, if they get into a third situation, head coach might say, hey, you got anything for this one? <laughs> might get radio silence back. <laughs> Two and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at the 34. On the ground, it's Mostert to start the drive. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. He was trying to clear the way, the big fullback, instead he gets a hold. And you don't see that very often on running plays from those guys, because usually they're the lead blocker. Normally, when he gets caught, it's in a passing situation. From the gun, a run with Moster. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. 107 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. Second down and a little more than a yard here. Play action. Now it's Tua. A quick throw there is incomplete. He was trying to get it to Tyreek Hill that time. And it's third and short. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. On third down, here comes Mostert. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. 
And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces, and, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 35-yard line. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Dolphins have a first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. He's had success on this drive, but not on this play. Finally, they bowed up defensively. I think they were determined not to let him take it pretty much all the way down the field. Yeah, it looks like they handled their run responsibilities correctly this time. What we call them run fits, everyone was in the right place. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second down at seven. They'll stay on the ground with Mostert. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. I like the call there because that was one to take time off the clock and get them closer to getting out of here with a W. In the mind of the play caller, all you want to hear is tick, tick, tick. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. I've got an idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling that the quarterback of this winning team He's going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game and the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. They run on first down, but it only produces a gain of two. It's second down now. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Here's a second and eight. So a victory here for the Miami Dolphins. Well, on one side of this, Charles, an impressive victory. On the other, I mean, you think about it, they scored in the first quarter, but then they didn't score in quarters two, three, or four. They're going to have a lot of work to do before stepping back on the field. Yeah, it'd be an interesting tape to analyze, won't it? Because why did it work in the first quarter, but nothing in quarters two, three, and four? So we always talk about adjustments. You don't